What's up guys? Slightly different room, a bit more table space. I've got a few um, minis on, on cue to paint on the table upstairs so we can do this little unboxing review. I know I said I won't be doing any more Transformers for a while, but I saw this puppy today and I thought, you don't see these very often, big vintage knockbacks and um, flashbacks of Buster 40th edition. 40th anniversary edition blaster 1984 to 2024 from the original Transformers the movie. For those of you who are OG Transformers fans, I know the excitement whenever you see one of these, you know, open up your and pay for on your birthdays or your Christmas or you maybe saved up your pocket money and you've won. Yeah. So we're gonna unbox Seller tape. Probably gonna need that again. Unorthodox unboxing knife using a filleting knife. Um, so ready to fill it in the knife. So, comes with little instructions on the top there. Those of you, like I said, those of you, awesome child of mine, getting to watch Transformers regularly on a regular basis. So, this was from Bidden Planet in Newcastle, forty-four ninety-nine. Uh, you know, bargain price. The vintage style is quite big. Big boy, the boxes were like this. So I have a background here. So, here's the big boy. We have our Hasbro leaflet, there, little thing there. And we have our own the rock songs. So we'll be, this would be a, as much of a review of the toy as it is of the instructions as it always is for most Transformers reviews that you see on YouTube. This knife is shocking. Sharper than you think it is. This is blaster with steel jaw. Obviously, he had his other like little compatriots. So let's get this is a I'm doing this unboxing with you guys. So unboxing from there. And I'll do all the little greeblies, all the extras as is. So we have our little ejector button that comes open like that. So I actually might just go through all the little accessories as and when. It appears the tape isn't what I want to sit in properly. There we go. That's a complaint on the box. That's those are nothing really major. Starting from his cassette mode form, and um, really the only kibble is the head. He has a little on off switch. I like the level of detail this has on it. So, what do we do first? Slide. Let's see how. Uh, so, I 
to the legs. So, Feet. And that those flick out. So head, turn the head around. So heads out, head turns and flicks down. Comes up. Now, this isn't cartoon accurate blaster. Head, arms come down like this. Hands so. Arms come back up. And arms extend and extend and not a lot of articulation, but this is a vintage style toy. So. Don't expect with these original, some of these original toys, this is a um, unpainted plastic on here, but in the 80s you would have been ecstatic to get this guy. There was no leg swivel, there was no waist swivel, there is head articulation, there is no elbow bend, there is no wrist swivel, there is a little a little internal rotation of the shoulder, which means the shoulders rotate all the way around. Around. Uh, which means you can do a tremendous split. You can also, there's no hip rotation, so you can't kick forward and backwards. He is essentially. That the, 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 there is a there is a limit to the posability of this guy. It's clunky, but it is a retro recreation, and most of the toys. This is the reason why a lot of people say, "Well, oh, GoBots was a better seller." GoBots was a better seller because the toys were more articulated back in the day. The part of the, some of the problem is just moving this shoulder around is create a little panel gap there. It speaks more to um, things. So we go into transformations, fairly easy. They, they were really easy back in the day. Um, he comes with his blaster, because his name is Blaster, and there is a couple of little windings to go on to his cassette. I'm go into the cassette mode. So there is a little instruction bit for the cassette for steel draw. In the background there, and we'll go into first things first. So, head. 
head's supposed to be the first move, so the head flicks up. So, so his head's got a little bit of an articulation. The legs are basically folded up. So, is this thing. But, legs kind of the front legs unfold and unfold so and then these ones come down and fold I think the new ones are a lot more articulated than this, and the tail comes out. So he has some three D potentiality is. Uh, and if you ask, see the guns, these bits come here. One there. So at the time the Transformers movie came out, I no longer had um, cable at the time, so I lost touch with how much um, Transformers I could watch. And the posability of this guy isn't great. I mean, I could use the top of the box as a demonstration. His head moves up and down, as you can tell. He's got double articulation on the head, up and down, double hinge there. Not these move, but um, his legs kind of move, but they're kind of like, like in line, so. Um, yes. In the 1980s, if you saved up or you begged and pleaded with your nan and granddad or your nan and grandma enough or your mum and dad enough, you too could have had the joy of owning this toy. Trust me, the cartoons were more redeeming than the actual... more redeeming than the toys were. Yeah. Hmm. I think with the new line toys, so I'm gonna put him back in his chest for now. So we're gonna pull off these little accessories which have no weapon storage on plastic, what she did do. Tail folds over, head folds down, moves down, legs move back up. And same for the feet kind of like these feet kind of double bend up. I'm gonna literally break this animal's joints. If I remember rightly, Soundwave was a more superior toy um, because he had alternate versions of him. There is a little 
release mechanism, isn't it? But there is an eject button in works. So if you actually read, there is. I don't know if you can just catch the light right there. There is an eject button, you press it, it does eject. But there's off button, on off button, and a play button. As you can tell, it doesn't receive batteries. So we go into, I mean, you, you can't really store these things. I mean, you could probably store these kind of Although these belong to steel drawer, they do actually look quite funky on his back. Weapon storage, you can probably store the gun on his back like so. Um but let's get over, back over, reverse engineer the pin. So start off again the head. Right, that's all the articulation in the arms. So I think you can clap it high. And kind of be a questionable robot. Um in the 80s, yes, there was a technology to put elbow joints in this, but it'd be interested to keep the price point down. And um, I think Hasbro at the time were in a position where they were kind of being pushed into marketing rather than quality. Um, so yeah, this is from the original mold. So this would have been head swivels down push one hand up push other hand up push one arm other arm push arm in so That's proper. Fold the toes back in. One, two, back in. Grab the handle so and slide across. And there is blaster back in. Position and yeah. it kind of had like this little tune a bit. The speakers don't actually work. Like I said, this thing doesn't take batteries. They probably could have had a like a double like a, um, a double A battery in there and have it play. I don't know. To have a transforming noises on a loop or something like that on the on off button. Like had an on off button there. Yeah. That's pretty much the 40, 40 years anniversary 1984 to 2024 Transformers more than ECI. Blaster from Transformers the movie. Is definitely more of a display piece, but the thing on this is the uh, actual play button that moves. Whereas a uh, your record, which would be your on off button. You have your 
eject button, which is cool. Yeah, that is. So if you do like the aesthetic, the old school aesthetic on this toy, by all means, buy it. I mean, for storage, you could, I mean, unrealistically, it kind of turns into kibble. Like that, and you could probably store the gun in the back, like so. Unofficial weapon storage, but that's pretty much blaster. Let's wrap this video up, shall we? It is pretty cool. It's a cool toy. Um, it was definitely more cool when I was a kid. Um, the new up-to-date version, I will probably will have to try. I'm going to have to get the up-to-date version of this one. Um, like the cartoon accurate one for a comparison. But, uh, and obviously I'm going to have to get same version of Soundwave if I can get my hands on him and um, obviously the new modern version of Soundwave as a thing, as a tape I've got a miniature version but it, um, it's not so good maybe you get a bigger version, possibly but yeah, this is a big toy it does fit in the palm of your hand and uh, yeah so without further ado instructions, clear, straight to the point why they've got to make them absolutely garbage in the new ones, I do not know. But um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, obviously, original OG fans of the show will be like, dude, that is so cool. It is cool. But um, yeah, at the time of this, when Transformers first aired, I was two. No, I was three. I was three years old, so I was old enough to appreciate. I wasn't old enough to appreciate the story, but I wasn't old enough to appreciate the coolness of the cartoon and the toys. Um, but yeah. If I can get my hands on some of the other original OG style toys, I'll definitely hands on them um, so yeah without further ado let, that's like I said let me know what you guys think of this in the comment section and then um, I've got a few more things of, to go over um, I've got a couple of books a comic and uh, so Critical Role fans I've got, a, I've got uh, Fox Machina Origins to go over and have a little quick review of like or read through or review of the artwork etc and one of my friends uh, Dungeon Master Chris uh, said if I want to get back into running games he's recommended um, Astonishing Random Tables books I'll be doing a, a review of this bad boy also forbidden, from Forbidden Planet some point um, even if I just write a source book um, it's a case of yeah without further ado this isn't a third party this is an official Hasbro product the original Hasbro logo Authentic. I don't know why they had these weird stacked things on the back. I think it was just to make it look cooler than it was. So those are illustration accurate images of the toys. You have the Dinobots, it's um, Jetfire, uh, the Insecticons, you have. Fuck. So, um, Sunstreaker, 
have fuck, fuck, so, uh, shockwave on there. And I think there's a, at least I got an old version of Jetfire. Jetfire, Skyfire, his name changed. The toy was Jetfire, the Skyfire, sorry. Um, I'm going to get this guy back in his packaging. Don't forget, hit the like, subscribe, and be part of that 100 sub club. I've been rambling for a little bit, I do apologise. Don't forget to be part of that 100 sub club for that giveaway. And, um, oh, I've just noticed this. It's even got a little thing for a headphone, but they could have put a bit more detail into it, but yeah. Also, you've got the old trademark stuff there. Serial number stamped in. Takara, Doc Co. Takara Co. Limited, 1984. Made in Vietnam. How times have changed. Now it is all, all the Takara stuff is made in Japan and America. So, I'll cover it. Yeah. You can see the little mechanism in there. Pretty cool when they're getting back boxed. So, there it is, original toy boxed up. All the instructions. This is how the original instructions would have came back in the day. Not this. This in here. Put them back in. And say, good night, Mr. Blaster. Good night, Steel Girl. To the display cabinet you go. So there it is. Ever long and prosper to all of one. May the force be with you. And don't forget, this was the channel you were looking for. And you will subscribe. You will do it now. Do it. Do it. Peace out.